ऑडियो बुक साइंस क्लास एट पेज वन हंड्रेड थर्टीन चैप्टर टेन रीचिंग द एज ऑफ एडोलेसेंस इन द प्रीवियस चैप्टर यू हैव लर्न हाउ एनिमल्स रिप्रोड्यूस इट इज ओनली आफ्टर ग्रोइंग अप टू अ सर्टन एज दैट ह्यूमन बींग्स एंड मैनी अदर एनिमल्स कैन रिप्रोड्यूस Why can humans reproduce only after a certain age? In this chapter, you will learn about changes that take place in the human body after which a person becomes capable of reproduction. In chapter nine, you have learnt about human reproductive organs. Here, we shall discuss the role that hormones play in bringing about changes that make a child grow into an adult. Ten point one. adolescence and puberty bujho was celebrating his 12th birthday after his friends left bujho and paheli began chatting with their parents paheli studies in an all girls school she started laughing she remarked that many of bujho's school friends whom she met after a year had suddenly shot up in height some of them were looking very funny with a hairy line above their lips Her mother explained that the boys had grown up. Growth begins from the day one is born, but upon crossing the age of ten or eleven, there is a sudden spurt in growth which becomes noticeable. The changes taking place in the body are part of growing up. They indicate that you are no longer a child, but are on the way to become an adult. Bujo said. I wonder how long this period marked by changes in the body will last. Paheli said, "It is a strange period of life when you are neither a child nor an adult. I wonder whether this period between childhood and adulthood has a special name. Growing up is a natural process, the period of life when the body undergoes changes leading to reproductive maturity is called adolescence." Adolescence begins around the age of 11 and lasts up to 18 or 19 years of age. Since this period covers the teens, 13 to 18 or 19 years of age, adolescents are also called teenagers. In girls, adolescence may begin a year or two earlier than in boys. Also, the period of adolescence varies from person to person. The human body undergoes several changes during adolescence. These changes mark the onset of puberty. The most important change which marks puberty is that boys and girls become capable of reproduction. Puberty ends when an adolescent reaches reproductive maturity. Page 114 Paheli and Bujho realized that sudden increase in height and hairy line above the lips in boys were signs of adolescence. They wanted to know more about other changes at puberty. 10.2 Changes at puberty. Increase in height. The most conspicuous change during puberty is the sudden increase in height. At this time the long bones that is the bones of the arms and the legs elongate and make a person tall activity 10.1 the following chart gives the average rate of growth in height of boys and girls with age the figures in columns 2 and 3 give the percentage of the height a person has reached at the age given in column 1 for example by the age 11 a boy has reached 81% of his probable full height while a girl has reached 88% of her full height these figures are only representative and there may be individual variations use the table for your friends and work out how tall they are likely to be find out who is likely to be the tallest and who might be the shortest in your class now we have a table it has two columns the first one is age in years and then the percentage of full height boys and girls age 8 boys 72% girls 77% age 9 boys 
75%, girls 81%, age 10, boys 78%, girls 84%, age 11, boys 81%, girls 88%, age 12, boys 84%, girls 91%, age 13, boys 88%, girls 95%, Age 14, boys 92%, girls 98%. Age 15, boys 95%, girls 99%. Age 16, boys 98%, girls 99.5%. Age 17, boys 99%, girls 100%. Age 18, boys 100% girls 100% calculation for full height in centimeter present height in centimeter divided by percentage of full height at this age as given in the chart multiplied by 100 a boy is 9 years old and 120 centimeter tall at the end of the growth period he is likely to be 120 divided by 75 into 100 cm is equal to 160 cm tall. Page 115 Activity 10.2 Use the data given in Activity 10.1 to draw a graph. Take age on the x-axis and percent growth in height on the y-axis. Highlight the point representing your age on the graph. Find out the percentage of height you have already reached. Calculate the height you might eventually reach. Tally your graph with the one given here. Figure 10.1 Graph showing percentage of height with age. Initially, girls grow faster than boys, but by about 18 years of age, both reach their maximum height. The rate of growth in height varies in different individuals. Some may grow suddenly at puberty and then slow down, while others may grow gradually. Paheli said, I am worried. Though I have become taller, my face looks much smaller compared to my body. There is no need for Paheli to worry. All parts of the body do not grow at the same rate. Sometimes the arms and legs or hands and feet of adolescents look oversized and out of proportion with the body. But soon the other parts catch up and result in a proportionate body. You must have noticed that height of an individual is more or less similar to that of some family member. This is because height depends on the genes inherited from parents. It is, however, very important to eat the right kind of food during these growing years. This helps the bones, muscles and other parts of the body get adequate nourishment for growth. You will find nutritional needs of adolescents discussed later in the lesson. Change in body shape Have you noticed that boys in your class have broader shoulders and wider chests than boys in junior classes? This is because they have entered the age of puberty when shoulders generally broaden as a result of growth. In girls, the region below the waist becomes wider. In boys, the muscles of the body grow more prominently than in the girls. Thus, changes occurring in adolescent boys and girls are different. Voice change Did you notice that sometimes the voice of some of the boys in your class cracks? At puberty, the voice box or the larynx begins to grow. Boys develop larger voice boxes. The growing voice box in boys can be seen as a protruding part of the throat called Adam's apple. Figure 10.2 Page 116 In girls, the larynx is hardly visible from the outside because of its small size. Generally, girls have a high-pitched voice, whereas boys have a deep voice. In adolescent boys, sometimes the muscles of the growing voice box go out of control and the voice becomes hoarse. This state may remain for a few days or weeks after which the voice becomes normal. Figure 10.2 
Adam's apple in a grown-up boy. Option. Figure 10.2 shows Adam's apple in a grown-up boy. In the image shown here, we can clearly see Adam's apple. Bujo said, Many of my classmates have a hoarse voice. Now I know why. Increased activity of sweat and sebaceous glands. During puberty, the secretion of sweat glands and sebaceous glands, oil glands, increases. Many young people get acne and pimples on the face at this time because of the increased activity of these glands in the skin. Development of sex organs Look up figure 9.1 and 9.3 of the previous lesson which show sex organs of humans. At puberty, male sex organs like the testes and penis develop completely. The testes also begin to produce sperms. In girls, the ovaries enlarge and eggs begin to mature. Also, ovaries start releasing mature eggs, reaching mental, intellectual and emotional maturity. Adolescence is also a period of change in a person's way of thinking. Adolescents are more independent than before and are also self-conscious. Intellectual development takes place and they tend to spend considerable time thinking. In fact, it is often the time in one's life when the brain has the greatest capacity for learning. Sometimes, however, an adolescent may feel insecure while trying to adjust to the changes in the body and mind. But as adolescent learners, you should know that there is no reason to feel insecure. These changes are a natural part of growing up. 10.3 Secondary Sexual Characters You have learned in Chapter 9 that testes and ovaries are the reproductive organs. They produce the gametes, that is, sperms and ova. In girls, breasts begin to develop at puberty and boys begin to grow facial hair, that is, moustaches and beard. Page 117 As these features help to distinguish the male from the female, they are called secondary sexual characters. Boys also develop hair on their chest. In both boys and girls, hair grows under the arms and in the region above the thighs or the pubic region. Both Bujo and Paheli wish to know what initiates changes at puberty. The changes which occur at adolescence are controlled by hormones. Hormones are chemical substances. These are secretions from endocrine glands or endocrine system. The male hormone or testosterone begins to be released by the testes at the onset of puberty. This causes changes in boys about which you have just learnt. For example, the growth of facial hair. Once puberty is reached in girls, ovaries begin to produce the female hormone or estrogen, which makes the breasts develop. Milk-secreting glands or mammary glands develop inside the breasts. The production of these hormones is under the control of another hormone secreted from an endocrine gland called Pituitary gland. 10.4. Role of hormones in initiating reproductive function. Endocrine glands release hormones into the bloodstream to reach a particular body part called target site. The target site responds to the hormone. There are many endocrine glands or ductless gland in the body. The testes and ovaries secrete sex hormones. You have just learnt that these hormones are responsible for the male and female secondary sexual characters. Further, the sex hormones are under the control of hormones from the pituitary gland, figure 10.3. The pituitary secretes many hormones, one of which makes an ova mature in the ovaries and sperms form in the testes, figure 10.3. The onset of puberty is controlled by hormones. First, hormones from pituitary stimulate testes and ovaries to release testosterone in male and estrogen in female, then released in the bloodstream and reach parts of the body, target site, which finally stimulate changes in the body at onset of puberty. Paheli and Bujo have now understood that puberty marks the beginning of the reproductive period when one becomes capable of reproduction. But they want to know 
if reproductive life once begun continues or it ends sometime page 118 10.5 reproductive phase of life in humans adolescents become capable of reproduction when their testes and ovaries begin to produce gametes the capacity for maturation and production of gametes lasts for a much longer time in males than in females in females the reproductive phase of life begins at puberty 10 to 12 years of age and generally lasts till the age of approximately 45 to 50 years the ova begin to mature with the onset of puberty one ovum matures and is released by one of the ovaries once in about 28 to 30 days during this period the wall of the uterus becomes thick so as to receive the egg in case it is fertilized and begins to develop this results in pregnancy if fertilization does not occur the released egg and the thickened lining of the uterus along with its blood vessels are shed off this causes bleeding in women which is called menstruation menstruation occurs once in about 28 to 30 days the first menstrual flow begins at puberty and is termed as menarche at 45 to 50 years of age the menstrual cycle stops stoppage of menstruation is termed menopause initially menstrual cycle may be irregular it takes some time to become regular paheli says that the reproductive life of a woman lasts from menarche to menopause is she right menstrual cycle is controlled by hormones the cycle includes the maturation of the egg its release thickening of uterine wall and its breakdown if pregnancy does not occur in case the egg is fertilized it begins to divide and then gets embedded in the uterus for further development as you have learnt in chapter 9 figure 9.8 10.6 how is the sex of the baby determined paheli said i heard my mother and my aunt talking about my cousin who is going to have a baby they were discussing whether she would give birth to a boy or a girl i wonder what makes the fertilized egg develop either into a boy or a girl boy or a girl inside the fertilized egg or zygote is the instruction for determining the sex of the baby this instruction is present in the thread like structures called chromosomes in the fertilized egg recall from chapter 8 that chromosomes are present inside the nucleus of every cell all human beings have 23 pairs of chromosomes in the nuclei of their cells two chromosomes out of these are the sex chromosomes named x and y a female has two x chromosomes while a male has one x and one y chromosome the gametes egg and sperm have only one set of chromosomes the unfertilized egg always has one x chromosome page 119 but sperms are of two kinds one kind has an x chromosome and the other kind has a y chromosome see figure 10.4 when a sperm containing x chromosome fertilizes the zygote would have two x chromosomes and develop into a female child if the sperm contributes a y chromosome to the egg ovum at fertilization the zygote would develop into a male child figure 10.4 sex determination in humans we can see two eggs when when x chromosome fertilizes the egg the result is xx girl while on the other hand when a sperm containing y chromosome fertilizes the egg the result is xy boy now you know that the sex chromosomes of the father determine the sex of an unborn baby the belief that mother is responsible for the sex of her baby is completely wrong and to blame her for this is totally unjustified 10.7 hormones other than sex hormones look at figure 10.3 again the hormones secreted by the pituitary stimulates testes and ovaries to produce their hormones 
you have already learnt that the pituitary gland is an endocrine gland. It is attached to the brain. Apart from the pituitary, the testes and the ovaries, there are other endocrine glands in the body such as thyroid, pancreas and adrenals. Figure 10.5 Position of endocrine glands in the human body The image clearly shows them. First, you can see the pituitary gland, then the thyroid gland, then adrenal gland, pancreas, position of the ovary in the female, and then testis. Bujo and Paheli had once visited their aunt who was a doctor and remembered that a boy named Kaka had a very big and bulging throat. Their aunt had told them that Kaka was suffering from goiter, a disease of the thyroid gland. Kaka's thyroid gland was not producing the hormone thyroxin. Page 120 Their aunt also told them that their uncle was suffering from diabetes because his pancreas was not producing the hormone insulin in sufficient quantities. Bujo and Paheli then asked their aunt about the adrenal glands, which are also shown in the chart hung on the wall of her clinic. The aunt told them that adrenal glands secrete hormones which maintain the correct salt balance in the blood. Adrenals also produce the hormone adrenaline. It helps the body to adjust to stress when one is very angry, embarrassed over it. Thyroid and adrenals secrete their hormones when they receive orders from the pituitary through its hormones. Pituitary also secretes growth hormone which is necessary for the normal growth of a person. Bujo asks, Are there hormones in other animals also? Have they any role to play in reproduction? 10.8 Role of Hormones in Completing the Life History of Insects and Frogs You have already learnt about the life history of the silk moth and the frog. The caterpillar has to pass through various stages to become an adult moth. Recall from class 7 the stages of the life history of the silk moth. Similarly, the tadpole passes through certain stages to become a frog. Chapter 9 this change from larva to adult is called metamorphosis, figure 9.10. Metamorphosis in insects is controlled by insect hormones. In a frog, it is controlled by thyroxin, the hormone produced by thyroid. Thyroxin production requires the presence of iodine in water. If the water in which the tadpoles are growing does not contain sufficient iodine, the tadpoles cannot become adults. Bujo wonders, if people do not have enough iodine in their diet, will they get goiter caused by lack of thyroxine? Activity 10.3 Collect information from magazines or from doctors and prepare a note on the importance of consuming iodized salt. You can also look for this information on the internet. 10.9 Reproductive Health the physical and mental well-being of an individual is regarded as an individual's health. To keep the body healthy, every human being at any stage needs to have a balanced diet. The person must also observe personal hygiene and undertake adequate physical exercise. During adolescence, however, these become even more essential as the body is growing. Nutritional Needs of the Adolescents Adolescence is a stage of rapid growth and development. Hence, the diet of an adolescent has to be carefully planned. Page 121 You have already learnt what a balanced diet is. Recall that a balanced diet means that the meals include proteins, carbohydrates, fats and vitamins in requisite proportions. Our Indian meal of roti, rice, dal, pulses and vegetables is a balanced meal. Milk is a balanced food in itself. Fruits also provide nourishment. For infants, mother's milk provides all the nourishment that they need. Iron builds blood and iron-rich foods such as leafy vegetables, jaggery, meat, citrus, Indian gooseberry, amla are good for adolescents. 
चेक आइटम्स फॉर लंच एंड डिनर इन योर मील इज द मील बैलेंस्ड एंड न्यूट्रिशियस डज इट इंक्लूड सीरियल्स विच गिव एनर्जी एंड मिल्क मीट नट्स एंड पल्सिस विच प्रोवाइड प्रोटीन्स फॉर ग्रोथ ऑल्सो डज इट इंक्लूड फैट्स एंड शुगर दैट गिव एनर्जी वॉट अबाउट फ्रूट्स एंड वेजिटेबल्स विच आर प्रोटेक्टिव फूड्स चिप्स एंड पैक्ड और टिन स्नैक्स दो वेरी टेस्टी शुड नेवर रिप्लेस रेगुलर मील्स एज दे डो नॉट हैव एडिक्वेट न्यूट्रिशनल वैल्यू एक्टिविटी टेन पॉइंट फोर राइट डाउन द आइटम्स ऑफ फूड इन योर ब्रेकफस्ट लंच एंड डिनर यू हैड ऑन द प्रीवियस डे आइडेंटिफाई द आइटम्स रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर प्रॉपर ग्रोथ ऑल्सो आइडेंटिफाई द जंक फूड दैट यू कंज्यूम द प्रीवियस डे एक्टिविटी टेन पॉइंट फाइव Get ideas from the pictures given in Figure ten point six. Prepare charts or posters and paste them in the class so that you are aware of the diet for adolescents. You may use your creative ideas and present it like an advertisement. You may even organize a competition on this topic. Figure ten point six: Nutritious items of food. And these items are meat, vegetables, milk, and eggs. fruits grains personal hygiene everyone should have a bath at least once every day it is more necessary for teenagers because the increased activity of sweat glands sometimes makes the body smelly all parts of the body should be washed and cleaned every day page 122 if cleanliness is not maintained there are chances of catching bacterial infection Girls should take special care of cleanliness during the time of menstrual flow. They should keep track of their menstrual cycle and be prepared for the onset of menstruation. Use sanitary napkin or clean homemade pads. Change pads after every 4 to 5 hours as per the requirement. Physical exercise. Walking and playing in fresh air keeps the body fit and healthy. All young boys and girls should take walks, exercise and play outdoor games. Myths, taboos, do's and don'ts. You have learned here and from chapter 9 the scientific facts related to human reproduction. There are many wrong notions which you should now be able to discard as informed adolescents. For example, there are myths and taboos regarding bodily changes. that adolescents experience some of these are given below and you can now argue why these are myths and not facts first a girl becomes pregnant if she looks at boys during menstruation two the mother is responsible for the sex of her child third a girl should not be allowed to work in the kitchen during menstruation You may come across many other myths and taboos. Discard them. Activity 10.6. Collect data on the number of children in your class who exercise regularly and who do not exercise regularly. Did you notice any difference in their fitness and health? Prepare a report on the benefits of regular exercise. Say no to drugs. Adolescence is a period of much activity in the body and mind which is a normal part of growing up so do not feel confused or insecure if anybody suggests that you will get relief if you take some drugs just say no unless prescribed by the doctor drugs are addictive if you take them once you feel like taking them again and again they harm the body in the long run they ruin health and happiness you must have heard about aids which is caused by a dangerous virus hiv this virus can pass on to a normal person from an infected person by sharing the syringes used for injecting drugs it can also be transmitted to an infant from the infected mother through her milk the virus can also be transmitted through sexual contact with the person infected with hiv adolescent pregnancy you might be knowing that in our country the legal age for marriage is 18 years for girls and 21 years for boys 
This is because teenage mothers are not prepared mentally or physically for motherhood. Early marriage and motherhood cause health problems in the mother and the child. It also curtails employment opportunities for the young woman and may cause mental agony as she is not ready for responsibilities of motherhood. Page 123 Keywords Adam's Apple Adol Adolescence Adrenaline Balanced Diet Endocrine Glands Estrogen Hormones Insulin Larynx Pituitary Gland Puberty Reproductive Health Secondary Sexual Characters Sex Chromosomes Target Sight Testosterone Thyroxin Voice Box What You Have Learnt Humans become capable of reproduction after puberty sets in. Children between the ages of 11 and 19 years are called adolescents. The onset of puberty brings about growth of the reproductive organs. Hair growth at various places on the body, breasts develop in girls and facial hair, moustache and beard appear in boys. Voice of boys becomes hoarse as voice box enlarges during adolescence. Children gain height during adolescence. The onset of puberty and maturity of reproductive parts are controlled by hormones. Hormones are secretions of endocrine glands which pour them directly into the bloodstream. Pituitary gland secretes hormones which include growth hormone and hormones that make other glands such as the testes, ovaries, thyroids and adrenals secrete hormones. Pancreas secretes insulin. Thyroid produces thyroxin and adrenals produce adrenaline. Testosterone is the male hormone and estrogen the female hormone. The uterine wall in females prepares itself to receive the developing fertilized egg. In case there is no fertilization, the thickened lining of the uterine wall breaks down and goes out of the body along with blood. This is called menstruation. Sex of the unborn child depends on whether the zygote has XX or XY chromosomes. It is important to eat balanced food and maintain personal hygiene during adolescence. Page 124 Exercises First, what is the term used for chemical secretions of endocrine glands responsible for changes taking place in the body? Second, Define adolescence. Third, what is menstruation? Explain. Fourth, list changes in the body that take place at puberty. Fifth, prepare a table having two columns depicting names of endocrine glands and hormones secreted by them. Sixth, what are sex hormones? Why are they named so? State their function. Seven. Choose the correct option. A. Adolescents should be careful about what they eat because 1. Proper diet develops their brains. 2. Proper diet is needed for the rapid growth taking place in their body. 3. Adolescents feel hungry all the time. 4. Taste buds are well developed in teenagers. B. Reproductive age in women starts when they're 1. Menstruation starts. 2. Breasts start developing. 3. Body weight increases. 4. Height increases. C. The right meal for adolescents consists of 1. Chips, noodles, coke. 2. Chapati, dal, vegetables. 3. Rice, noodles, and burger. 4. Vegetable cutlets, chips and lemon drink. 8. Write notes on A. Adam's apple B. Secondary sexual characters C. Sex determination in the unborn baby Page 125 9. Word game Use the clues to work out the words. In the across section, which is from left 
to write. 3. Protruding voice box in boys. This is a 10 letter word which starts with A. 4. Plants without ducts. This is a 9 letter word and the third letter is D. 7. Endocrine gland attached to brain. A 9 letter word starting with P. 8. Secretion of endocrine glands. A 7 letter word in which the fourth letter is M and the last letter is E. 9. Pancreatic hormone. A 7 letter word whose third letter is S. 10. Female hormone. An 8 letter word in which the third letter is T. Down, which is the top to bottom direction, has 1. Male hormone. A 12 letter word in which the second letter is E. 2. Secretes thyroxin. A 7 letter word in which Fourth letter is R. 3. Another term for teenage. An 11 letter word in which the first letter is A and the tenth letter is C. 5. Hormone reaches here through bloodstream. This is a 10 letter word in which the seventh letter is S. 6. Voice box, a six letter word in which the fourth letter is Y. 7. Term for change at adolescence. This is a seven letter word which starts with P. Page 126. 10. The table below shows the data on likely heights of boys and girls as they grow in age. Draw graphs showing height and age for both boys and girls on the same graph paper. What conclusions can be drawn from these graphs? The table has two main columns. The second column has two sub-columns. The first column is for age in years and the second column is for height in centimeter. One column, the first sub-column is for boys and second for girls. Age 0, boys 53, girls 53. Age 4, boys 96, girls 92. Age 8, boys 114, girls 110. Age 12, boys 129, girls 133. Age 16, boys 150, girls 150. Age 20, boys 173, girls 165. This table is depicted in the form of a graph. On the x-axis, we have age in years and on the y-axis, we have height in centimeter. We can clearly see the growth in height of both boys and girls as their age increases. Extended Learning Activities and Projects 1. Find out from your elder relatives about their awareness of the legal status of early marriage. You yourself may get information on it from your teacher, parents, a doctor or the internet. Write a two-minute speech explaining why early marriage is not good for the couple. 2. Collect newspaper cuttings and information in magazines about HIV, AIDS. Option. Collect newspaper cuttings and information in magazines about HIV or AIDS. Write a one-page article of 15 to 20 sentences on HIV or AIDS. Option. Write a one-page article of 15 to 20 sentences on HIV AIDS. 3. In our country, according to 2011 census, there are 940 adolescent females for every 1,000 males. Find out. A. The concerns of the community regarding this low ratio. Remember that the chance of having a boy or girl is equal. B. What amniocentesis is 
and how useful this technique is. Why is its use for identification of sex of the unborn child banned in India? 4. Put your ideas together and write a short note on the importance of knowing facts about reproduction. For more information visit www.teenshealth.org forward slash TEEN forward slash sexual underscore health forward slash www.adolescenthealth.com Chapter 10 ends here. Narrator Neeraj Yadav You were just listening to this audio book. Technical Control Bati Langlingdo Technical Assistance Vikas Sangwan Assistance in Production Jagbandhu Jana Direction and Production Vandana Arimardan This audio book is brought to you by CIET and CERT New Delhi, India Audiobook Science Class 8 Page 146 Chapter 12 Friction You might have seen a driver of a car or a truck slowing down the vehicle at a traffic signal. You too slow down your bicycle whenever needed by applying brakes. Have you ever thought why a vehicle slows down when brakes are applied? Not only vehicles, any object moving over the surface of another object slows down when no external force is applied on it. Finally, it stops. Have you not seen a moving ball on the ground stopping after some time? Why do we slip when we step up on a banana peel? Figure 12.1 Why is it difficult to walk on a smooth and wet floor? Figure 12.1 in figure 12.1, we can see two boys. One boy steps on a banana peel and falls down. You will find the answers to such questions in this chapter. 12.1 Force of Friction Activity 12.1 Gently push a book on a table. Figure 12.2a You observe that it stops after moving for some distance. Repeat this activity pushing the book from the opposite direction. Figure 12.2b Does the book stop this time too? Can you think of an explanation? Can we say that a force must be acting on the book opposing its motion? This force is called the force of friction. Figure 12.2a-b Friction opposes relative motion between the surfaces of the book and the table. Figure 12.2 has two images, A and B, which depict friction opposes relative motion between the surfaces of the book and the table. Page 147 You saw that if you apply the force along the left, friction acts along the right. If you apply the force along the right, the friction acts along the left direction. In both cases, the force opposes the motion of the book. The force of friction always opposes the applied force. In the above activity, the force of friction acts between the surface of the book and the surface of the table. Is the friction the same for all the surfaces? Does it depend on the smoothness of the surfaces? Let us find out. 12.2 Factors Affecting Friction Activity 12.2 Tie a string around a brick. Pull the brick by a spring balance. Figure 
12.3. You need to apply some force. Note down the reading on the spring balance when the brick just begins to move. It gives you a measure of the force of friction between the surface of the brick and the floor. Figure 12.3. In figure 12.3, a brick is being pulled by spring balance. Now, wrap a piece of polythene around the brick and repeat the activity. Do you observe any difference in the readings of the spring balance in the above two cases? What might be the reason for this difference? Repeat this activity by wrapping a piece of jute bag around the brick. What do you observe? Spring balance. Spring balance is a device used for measuring the force acting on an object. It consists of a coiled spring which gets stretched when a force is applied to it. Stretching of the spring is measured by a pointer moving on a graduated scale. The reading on the scale gives the magnitude of the force. Activity 12.3 Make an inclined plane on a smooth floor or on a table. You may use a wooden board supported by bricks or books. Figure 12.4a Put a mark with a pen at any point A on the inclined plane. Now, let a pencil cell move down from this point. How far does it move on the table before coming to rest? Note down the distance. Page 148. Now, spread a piece of cloth over the table. Make sure that there are no wrinkles in the cloth. Try the activity again. Figure 12.4b. What we have just discussed is shown in figure 12.4. The pencil cell covers different distances on different surfaces. Repeat this activity by spreading a thin layer of sand over the table. Maintain the same slope throughout the activity. In which case is the distance covered the minimum? Why is the distance covered by the pencil cell different every time? Try to reason why. Discuss the result. Does the distance covered depend on the nature of the surface on which the cell moves? Could the smoothness of the surface of the cell also affect the distance travelled by it? Bojo says, I shall try the activity by wrapping a piece of sandpaper around the cell. Friction is caused by the irregularities on the two surfaces in contact. Even those surfaces which appear very smooth have a large number of minute irregularities on them. Figure 12.5 Irregularities on the two surfaces lock into one another. When we attempt to move any surface, we have to apply a force to overcome interlocking. On rough surfaces, there are a larger number of irregularities. So, the force of friction is greater if a rough surface is involved. Figure 12.5 shows surface irregularities. The first surface is of a book, which is rough. The second surface is of a table, which is comparatively quite smooth. Page 149 we see that the friction is caused by the interlocking of irregularities in the two surfaces. It is obvious that the force of friction will increase if the two surfaces are pressed harder. You can experience it by dragging a mat when nobody is sitting on it and when a person is sitting on it. Figure 12.6 You have to push on the box to keep it moving. Recall your experience when last time you moved a heavy box from one place to another. Figure 12.6 If you have no such experience, get that experience now. What is easier, to move the box from rest or to move it when it is already in motion? The force required to overcome friction at the instant an object starts moving from rest is a measure of static friction. On the other hand, the force required to keep the object moving with the same speed is a measure of sliding friction. When the box starts sliding, the contact points on its surface do not get enough time to lock into the contact points on the floor. So, 
The sliding friction is slightly smaller than the static friction and you find it somewhat easier to move the box already in motion than to get it started. 12.3 Friction A necessary evil Recall now some of your experiences. Is it easier to hold a kulhar, earthen pot or a glass tumbler? Suppose the outer surface of the tumbler is greasy or has a thin layer of cooking oil on it, would it become easier or more difficult to hold it? Just think, would it be possible to hold the glass at all if there is no friction? Recall also how difficult it is to move on a wet muddy track or wet marble floor. Can you imagine being able to walk at all if there were no friction? You could not write with pen or pencil if there were no friction. When your teacher is writing with chalk on the blackboard, its rough surface rubs off some chalk particles which stick to the blackboard. Figure 12.7 A nail is fixed in the wall due to friction. Page 150 Could it happen if there were no friction between the chalk and the board? If an object started moving, it would never stop if there were no friction. Had there been no friction between the tyres of the automobiles and the road, they could not be started or stopped or turned to change the direction of motion. You could not fix a nail on the wall, figure 12.7, or tie a knot. Without friction, no building could be constructed. In figure 12.8, soles of shoes worn out due to friction. On the other hand, friction is an evil too. It wears out the materials whether they are screws, ball bearings or soles of shoes. Figure 12.8 You must have seen worn out steps of foot over bridges at railway stations. Friction can also produce heat. Vigorously rub your palms together for a few minutes. Figure 12.9 How do you feel? When you strike a matchstick against the rough surface, it catches fire. Figure 12.10 you might have observed that the jar of a mixer becomes hot when it is run for a few minutes. Figure 12.9 Rubbing of your palms makes you feel warm. You can cite various other examples in which friction produces heat. In fact, when a machine is operated, heat generated causes much wastage of energy. We shall discuss the ways of minimizing friction in the following section. Figure 12.10 depicts how striking a matchstick produces fire by friction. Page 151 12.4 Increasing and Reducing Friction As you have seen in the previous section, friction is desirable in some situations. Have you ever thought why the sole of your shoe is grooved? Figure 12.11a it is done to provide the shoes better grip on the floor so that you can move safely. Similarly, the treaded tyres of cars, trucks and bulldozers provide better grip with the ground. Figure 12.11 A. Soles of shoes and B. Tyres are treaded to increase friction. We deliberately increase friction by using brake pads in the brake system of bicycles and automobiles. When you are riding a bicycle, the brake pads do not touch the wheels. But when you press the brake lever, these pads arrest the motion of the rim due to friction. The wheel stops moving. You might have seen that Kabaddi players rub their hands with soil for a better grip of their opponents. Gymnasts apply some coarse substance on their hands to increase friction for better grip. In some situations, however, Friction is undesirable and we would want to minimize it. Why do you sprinkle fine powder on the carom board? Figure 12.12 .12. You might have noticed that when a few drops of oil are poured on the hinges of a door, the door moves smoothly. A bicycle and a motor mechanic uses grease between the moving parts of these machines. In all the above cases, we want to reduce friction in order to increase efficiency. Figure 12.12 .12. Powder is sprinkled on the carom board to reduce friction. When oil, 
grease or graphite is applied between the moving part of a machine, a thin layer is formed there and moving surfaces do not directly rub against each other. Figure 12.13 Interlocking of irregularities is avoided to a great extent. Movement becomes smooth. The substances which reduce friction are called lubricants. In some machines, it may also be advisable to use oil as lubricant. An air cushion between the moving parts is used to reduce friction. Figure 12.13 Action of Lubricant Figure 12.13 depicts action of lubricant. We can see two surfaces and in between there is a coat of a lubricant. Page 152 Bujo wonders can we reduce friction to zero by polishing surfaces or using large amount of lubricants? Haley is happy to answer. Friction can never be entirely eliminated. No surface is perfectly smooth. Some irregularities are always there. 12.5 Wheels reduce friction. You must have seen attaches and other pieces of luggage fitted with rollers. Even a child can pull such pieces of luggage. Figure 12.14 Why is it so? Let us find out. Figure 12.14 In figure 12.14, we can see a child with a piece of luggage fitted with rollers. Activity 12.4 Take a few pencils, which are cylindrical in shape. Place them parallel to each other on a table. Place a thick book over it. Figure 12.15 Now, push the book. You observe the pencils rolling as the book moves. Do you feel it easier to move the book in this way than to slide it? Do you think that resistance to the motion of the book has been reduced? Have you seen heavy machinery being moved by placing logs under it? Figure 12.15 Motion of the book on rollers. When one body rolls over the surface of another body, the resistance to its motion is called rolling friction. Rolling reduces friction. It is always easier to roll than to slide a body over another. That is the reason it is convenient to pull luggage fitted with rollers. Can you now understand why the wheel is said to be one of the greatest inventions of mankind? Since the rolling friction is smaller than the sliding friction, sliding is replaced in most machines by rolling by the use of ball bearings. Common examples are the use of ball bearings between hubs and the axles of ceiling fans and bicycles. Figure 12.16 Page 153 Figure 12.16 Ball bearings reduce friction. 12.6 Fluid friction. You know that air is very light and thin, yet it exerts frictional force on objects moving through it. Similarly, water and other liquids exert force of friction when objects move through them. In science, the common name of gases and liquids is fluids. So, we can say that fluids exert force of friction on objects in motion through them. The frictional force exerted by fluids is also called drag. The frictional force of an object in a fluid depends on its speed with respect to the fluid. The frictional force also depends on the shape of the object and the nature of the fluid. It is obvious that when objects move through fluids, they have to overcome friction acting on them. In this process, they lose energy. Efforts are, therefore, made to minimize friction. Where do you think scientists get hints for these special shapes? From nature, of course, birds and fishes have to move about in fluids all the time. Their bodies must have evolved to shapes which would make them lose less energy in overcoming friction. You read about these shapes in class 6. Look carefully at the shape of an aeroplane, figure 12.17. Do you find any similarity in its shape and that of a bird? In fact, all vehicles are designed to have shapes which reduce 
fluid friction figure 12.17 figure 12.17 depicts similarity in shapes of an aeroplane and a bird page 154 keywords ball bearing drag fluid friction friction interlocking lubricants rolling friction sliding friction static friction a riddle for you in some situations i oppose the motion in other situations i facilitate the motion but i always oppose the relative motion between two moving surfaces put some lubricant and i become small there make the moving surfaces rough i make the movement tough i may be static sliding or rolling but whenever two surfaces are in motion i am always there tell me who i am what you have learnt friction opposes the relative motion between two surfaces in contact it acts on both the surfaces friction depends on the nature of surfaces in contact for a given pair of surfaces friction depends upon the state of smoothness of those surfaces friction depends on how hard the two surfaces press together static friction comes into play when we try to move an object at rest sliding friction comes into play when an object is sliding over another sliding friction is smaller than static friction friction is important for many of our activities friction can be increased by making a surface rough the sole of the shoes and the tires of the vehicle are treaded to increase friction friction is sometimes undesirable friction can be reduced by using lubricants when one body rolls over another body rolling friction comes into play rolling friction is smaller than sliding friction in many machines friction is reduced by using ball bearings fluid friction can be minimized by giving suitable shapes to bodies moving in fluids page 155 first fill in the blanks a friction opposes the blank between the surfaces in contact with each other b friction depends on the blank of surfaces c friction produces blank d sprinkling of powder on the carom board blank friction e sliding friction is blank than the static friction second four children were asked to arrange forces due to rolling static and sliding frictions in a decreasing order their arrangements are given below choose the correct arrangement a rolling static sliding b rolling sliding static c static sliding rolling d sliding static rolling third elida runs her toy car on dry marble floor wet marble floor newspaper and towel spread on the floor the force of friction acting on the car on different surfaces in increasing order will be a wet marble floor dry marble floor newspaper and towel b newspaper towel dry marble floor wet marble floor c towel newspaper dry marble floor wet marble floor d wet marble floor dry marble floor towel newspaper fourth suppose your writing desk is tilted a little a book kept on it starts sliding down show the direction of frictional force acting on it fifth you spill a bucket of soapy water on a marble floor accidentally would it make it easier or more difficult for you to walk on the floor why sixth explain why sportsmen use shoes with spikes seventh Iqbal has to push a lighter box and Seema has to push a similar heavier box on the same floor who will have to apply a larger force and why eighth explain why sliding friction is less than static friction ninth 
give examples to show that fiction is both a friend and a foe. Tenth, explain why objects moving in fluids must have special shapes. Page 156. Extended Learning Activities and Projects 1. What role does friction play in the sport of your choice? Collect some pictures of that sport in action where friction is either supporting it or opposing it. Display these pictures with proper captions on the bulletin board of your classroom. 2. Imagine that friction suddenly vanishes. How would life be affected? List 10 such situations. 3. Visit a shop which sells sports shoes. Observe the soles of shoes meant for various sports. Describe your observations. 4. A toy to play with. Take an empty matchbox. Take out its tray. Cut a used refill of a ball pen of the same width as the tray as shown in the figure below. Fix the refill with two pins on the top of the tray as shown in figure 12.18. Make two holes on the opposite sides of the tray. Make sure that the holes are large enough to allow a thread to pass through them easily. Take a thread about a meter long and pass it through the holes as shown. Fix beads at the two ends of the thread so that it does not come out. Insert the tray in the outer cover of the matchbox. Suspend the matchbox by the thread. Leave the thread loose. The matchbox will start falling down due to gravity. Tighten the thread now and observe what happens. Explain your observation. Can you relate it to friction? Figure 12.18 has four images to explain what we just discussed. You can read more on the related topic on the following websites. http colon forward slash forward slash www dot school hyphen for hyphen champions dot com forward slash science forward slash friction dot htm http forward slash forward slash hyperphysics dot phy hyphen astr dot gsu dot edu forward slash hbase forward slash f i r c t numeric 2 dot html chapter 12 ends here narrator neeraj yadav you were just listening to this audio book technical control buddy langling do technical assistance vikas sangwan assistance in production jagbandhu jana Direction and production, Vandana Arimardhan. This audiobook is brought to you.